Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From tunnels that go under the ocean to skyscrapers that disappear into the sky, here are eight insane engineering marvels. Number 8. Palm Islands Dubai is no stranger to engineering accomplishments. The cosmopolitan city boasts the world's tallest skyscraper and is also home to the world's largest indoor theme park, IMG Worlds of Adventure, in the middle of the desert. In addition to these achievements, Dubai has another claim to fame, the world's largest man-made archipelago, known as the Palm Islands. These islands are the brainchild of the current Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and Emir of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The project's purpose is to expand Dubai's coastline and to attract tourism. Is it working? Have you been yet? Construction on the islands began in 2001 and took just six years to complete. The islands were made by a process called land reclamation. Sand was dredged from the floors of the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Gulf. Then, with the help of GPS for precision, it was sprayed and vibro-compacted into shape. Vibro-compaction is the process of vibrating sand with probes and saturating loose sands with jets of water to increase its density. But first, an 11-kilometer-long crescent-shaped breakwater was constructed using millions of tons of blasted mountain rock for protection against strong currents and seasonal winds that blow across the Gulf from Iraq. The breakwater itself was an engineering feat. Its lower layer is made of sand covered by an erosion-preventing water-permeable geotextile. The sand is covered by one-ton rocks, which are capped by large rocks weighing up to six tons each. Designers from Nakheel, the project's development company, believe the breakwater will protect the Palm Islands from massive storms, typical Gulf weather, and even the rising sea levels caused by climate change. Let's hope so, since the islands have become a popular destination for tourists and long-term residents alike, and is expected to eventually have 120,000 residents and 20,000 daily visitors. Number 7. The Hoover Dam the Hoover Dam is located on the border between Arizona and Nevada in the USA. The dam provides flood control and is a huge supplier of hydroelectric power. Despite criticism from skeptics, who thought the $49 million project would fail financially or that the dam simply couldn't be built, plans moved forward. By the way, in today's money, that would be $860 million. There were various perceived benefits to building the Hoover Dam. It would protect cities and farms by taming the flood-prone Colorado River, generate cheap electricity, and provide thousands of desperately needed jobs during the Great Depression. First, diversion tunnels were built to redirect the flow of the river away from the construction site. Then, millions of tons of rocks were excavated. To protect themselves from falling rocks, workers dipped their hats in tar, effectively creating the first hard hats. The work was dangerous. 112 people died during the construction of the dam. Beginning in June 1933, concrete was poured in rectangular pieces, which were cooled with pipes filled with ice water. It took nearly two years to pour the 3.25 million cubic yards of concrete. Finally, in 1935, the dam was finished, and the largest reservoir in the U.S., Lake Mead, was created. At its peak, the project employed over 5,000 people. Have you been to the Hoover Dam? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you are new here. We'd love to have you! Number 6. Large Hadron Collider The 17-mile-long Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, is the world's most powerful particle accelerator. It's buried 575 feet underground, on the border of France and Switzerland, and was built by the European Organization for Nuclear Research, known as CERN. Over 100 countries and over 10,000 scientists collaborate with this project that cost over 7.5 billion euros to build. As its name suggests, the LHC forces particle beams to collide, traveling in opposite directions at nearly the speed of light, and guided by a strongly magnetic field maintained by nearly 10,000 superconducting electromagnets. Devices like the Large Hadron Collider are meant to help scientists understand the origins of the universe and test theories of particle physics. It also is an important tool to search for new particles. The collider is a circular concrete tunnel which contains parallel beam pipes going in opposite directions and four places where they intersect so the particles can collide. Its size alone was a huge engineering challenge, let alone controlling and monitoring the energy stored in the magnets and beams. 
It uses tons and tons of super cool liquid helium to keep everything cool. While rumors exist that famed physicists Neil deGrasse Tyson and Stephen Hawking have expressed concern that the Large Hadron Collider could create a mini black hole that would destroy the universe, whether they actually made those claims is widely debated. Number 5. The Falkirk Wheel the Falkirk Wheel is the world's only rotating boat lift, connecting the Forth and Clyde Canal and the Union Canal in Scotland. When it opened in 2002, the two canals were connected for the first time since the 1930s, when a staircase of 11 locks, which had taken nearly a day to transit, was dismantled. The construction of the wheel was part of the Millennium Link project, which sought to reconnect the two canals. To build the wheel, the parts were constructed and assembled in Derbyshire. Then they were disassembled, transported to Falkirk, bolted together, and crane lifted into place. Over 1,000 construction staff were required for the project, and over 1,300 tons of steel were used to complete the wheel, along with 15,000 hand-tightened bolts. The 114-foot-tall lift is the equivalent height of eight stacked double-decker buses. Each of the two gondolas holds enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. They were designed based on Archimedes' principle that floating objects displace their own weight in water. Therefore, the weight of the contents of each gondola are always the same, even if one is empty and the other one contains a boat. To be safe, the water levels are always monitored by electric sensors to ensure they're equal. The wheel is powered by 10 hydraulic motors, which transports the boat in each gondola to their respective canals in just four minutes. It can rotate both clockwise and counterclockwise, and the operator in the control room is responsible for rotating the lift in both directions the same amount of times to reduce wear on its bearings and other moving parts. During the rotation, the gondolas are kept in the upright position by a simple set of cogs. Easy, right? Perhaps the most amazing feature of the Falkirk wheel is its energy efficiency. Operating the wheel only requires the same amount of energy as boiling eight electric kettles, thanks to the principles of balance and equilibrium that its design was based on. Number 4. The Channel Tunnel The Channel Tunnel, or the Channel for short, is a famous underground passageway between Britain and France that connects the United Kingdom to the European mainland. The 31-mile tunnel actually consists of three tunnels, two of which are used for trains and one which serves as an emergency exit and as a service tunnel. It is the longest underwater tunnel in the world. Prior to the completion of the channel in 1994, people wishing to travel between England and France had to endure a 90-minute ferry ride, despite the two countries being separated by only 30 miles of water. Today, the channel enables upwards of 50,000 daily commuters to traverse the English Channel in just 35 minutes. The idea of an underground tunnel connecting England and France was first proposed in 1802 by French mining engineer Albert Mathieu Favier. Plans for such a tunnel were discussed several times in following years, and a mile-long tunnel was drilled in 1880 before the project was once again abandoned. Finally, in 1988, plans for the channel finally started to come to fruition. Building the Channel Tunnel presented challenges from every fathomable angle, from securing funding to acquiring experienced engineers and specialized tunnel boring machines. Skilled and unskilled workers also had to be hired and housed. To fund the project, money was borrowed from over 50 large banks. Construction was started simultaneously from both England and France, with plans to meet in the middle. Tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, burrowed through a layer of chalk underneath the channel, with the debris being hauled behind the machine using conveyor belts. On the British side, the debris, also known as spoil, was hauled up to the surface using railroad wagons. On the French side, the spoil was mixed with water and pumped out through a pipeline. As progress was made, the tunnel was lined with concrete. One of the biggest challenges of the project was aligning the tunnels to meet in the middle. Until it happened, nobody knew for sure if it would work. The calculations were made using special surveying equipment and lasers, and from there on out, everyone hoped for the best. On December 1, 1990, the two sides of the service tunnel were officially connected. The cost totaled around $15 billion, but the project has proven to be worth its hefty price tag and remains a booming success. Number 3. The Burj Khalifa When I mentioned earlier that Dubai is home to the world's biggest skyscraper, I was referencing the Burj Khalifa, which stands at an astonishing 2,712 feet high, approximately twice the height of the Empire State Building and three times that of the Eiffel Tower. What makes the colossal tower even more amazing is the short period of time it took to build. Construction began in 2004, and just five years later, in 2009, the exterior was completed. 
construction of the Burj Khalifa totaled 22 million man-hours, with 12,000 daily workers on site. The Burj Khalifa opened the following year as part of a large-scale mixed-use development called Downtown Dubai, which included other city landmarks such as the Dubai Fountain and the Dubai Mall. Downtown Dubai cost $20 billion. In addition to the 160-story tower itself, the plans for the development included a separate six-story office annex, a two-story pool annex, and an adjacent podium structure. The structure is primarily made of 280,000 square meters of reinforced concrete, and special mixes of concrete were made to ensure the building's ability to withstand pressure. Extensive tests were required to ensure that the tower would be able to withstand high winds, especially at its upper levels. The Burj Khalifa contains several floors of permanent residences, a top-of-the-line Armani hotel spanning the 39th floor, and restaurants offering various international cuisines. There are several observatories throughout the building, including the highest in the world, located on the 148th floor. It's not just tall, it's mega tall! Number 2. Langkawi Sky Bridge Located on top of Malaysia's Machin Chang Mountain at 2,170 feet above sea level, the Langkawi Sky Bridge is a 410-foot-long curved pedestrian cable-stayed bridge, and just getting to it is a chore. The top station is the first point of access, and visitors are transported there via the Langkawi Cable Car, which is the world's steepest sky cab. From there, visitors are taken to the bridge by an inclined lift called the Sky Glide. The bridge cost $1.2 million and was built in just a year, between August 2003 and 2004. To build the bridge, its parts were lifted atop the mountain by helicopter, where it was assembled into position. It was opened to the public in April 2005 and is the longest free span and curved bridge in the world. The bridge accommodates up to 250 people at a time and is suspended from a single 269-foot tall pylon that is anchored to a concrete pad below. Due to its curved nature, visitors are offered views of the lush jungle below and the surrounding mountain landscape from various perspectives that simply can't be offered by a normal bridge. Number 1. The Panama Canal Building this entirely man-made, 48-mile-long waterway that connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans came with numerous challenges. The idea for the construction of a canal to shorten the journey around the southern tip of South America emerged as early as the 16th century. During the 1880s, a French construction team was forced to abandon the project due to technological and financial constraints. Finally, in 1904, the United States commenced with the project. Now we take it for granted, but in the past, it was a 12,000-mile journey to get from one side of the U.S. to the other, around 67 days if you were lucky and had good weather. To date, the building of the Panama Canal remains one of history's largest and most difficult engineering projects. It required massive manpower, with 40,000 workers from 50 countries working on the project for 10 hours a day, 6 days a week. The entire island of Manhattan could have been buried 12 feet deep in the rubble and dirt that was excavated for the nearly 50-mile-long tunnel. There are three sets of locks throughout the canal, which runs due south and then east. Ships are lifted and lowered by the locks, which acts as water elevators and are assisted by the gravity of the canal's lakes. On August 14, 1914, the Panama Canal officially opened. In 1979, control of the canal was taken over by a joint U.S.-Panama Commission. Finally, in 1999, Panama gained sole control of the artificial waterway. Operating the canal, which is open 24-7 and part of 144 international trade routes, requires 10,000 workers. The Panama Canal has proven to be a critical advancement in water travel and the shipment of goods, with 13,000 ships passing through daily. It takes just 8 to 10 hours to traverse the canal, far less time than the weeks or months it would have taken to sail around the entire continent of South America. That's all for today, but there's plenty more where that came from. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!